with this mellow song. I can't go wrong in the mellow Welcome to the Quarantine Speakeasy number six. My name is Patrick Solari, coming to you live from New York City. And uh, we're so glad that you're joining us today. Uh, we've got a very, very special show planned. Uh, as some of you probably know, it is the fifth anniversary of the Intrepid Battle of the Big Bands, which is uh, one of the biggest events that we produce every year. And uh, we're obviously not doing it this year live, so we've had to uh, come up with this interesting format for a virtual uh, online event. And we're very excited that we've been able to pull together a lot of the performers that we've had uh, over the past few years and um, try and do something a little different, uh, a little bit more of the times. And uh, uh, just a little background, I'm Patrick Soleri. I run Prohibition Productions here in New York. and. Uh, we're the largest independent producer of hot jazz and swing dance events in town. What that means is that we uh, are a one-person company and we produce um, events with uh, live music at all of our uh, all the projects that we do. So uh, we work at various bars and restaurants, uh, as well as doing a few ticketed events uh, throughout the year. And um, obviously, we can't perform live anymore with the quarantine and a lot of our bands and performers aren't able to perform they've lost a lot of their work so we're trying to uh, do this weekly variety show as a way to help everyone out we bring the community together which is something I think we very much need right now um, and we give an opportunity for uh, musicians and performers to uh, perform in a live context um, or produce something specially just for this and um, and then we take donations that everyone has uh, pitched in and we divide it amongst everyone who is on tonight's show. So uh, what that means is that we, we accept donations. Uh, no, no sum is too large. We do suggest a $5 minimum donation and that is made uh, through PayPal or through Zelle or um, through Venmo and then uh, we tally that up and uh, we, we take donations all the way through Tuesday, and then in the middle of the week, we'll divide that up and split it between all of our performers. Um, we're also gonna be uh, giving um, a portion of tonight's proceeds to the uh, Veterans Radiothon in Philadelphia, and our next guest is gonna tell us a little bit about that, but um, with uh, this show is usually uh, around Memorial Day weekend on the Intrepid as part of Fleet Week, so uh, this is a great opportunity for us to also give back to veterans. Um, so uh, <clears throat> the donations, um, we're going to put this uh, on the chat on the side. So if you're familiar with Zoom, you probably know. But uh, there's a chat function. So there's a little button uh, either on the bottom of your screen or on the side. And if you hit that, you can join in on the chat. Please let us know where you're watching from. We've been very fortunate to have uh, viewers from all over the world over the last few weeks. And uh, we've been averaging about a dozen countries or more, um, up to 17 countries as far as, as uh, Japan and, and Australia. And we've been getting viewers from about half the state. So please uh, say hello uh, and tell us where you're coming in from. And um, we'll also post uh, the donation information on the chat function uh, on the side. And you can also find that on our website, uh, on the Facebook page, as well as the registration form that you receive to get the link. So we are both streaming on Zoom, which is live. And we also have a Facebook Live that we've started up. And um, 
Uh, but if you want to participate later in the after party and dancing, you're going to have to uh, join us here on Zoom. You can join at any time. So uh, you will be able to uh, sign in and, and, and join uh, uh, if you would like to do that. We're going to do an after party at the very end. And uh, if you've noticed, we've been uh, playing some music um, and uh, for the pre-show, we had a slideshow I put together of photos from the Intrepid. And uh, all the music is actually live recordings that we've done over the last couple of years. And uh, when we're doing our DJ breaks, we're actually going to be uh, featuring the live recordings, um, and uh, which turned out extremely, extremely well. So a little bit about the uh, Intrepid Battle of the Big Bands. We started this uh, five years ago, and it was uh, originally an idea that I had uh, to um, kind of do a, almost a festival of, of live big bands, which doesn't really exist. And right when I was starting to swing dance um, in 99, there was actually another event that was held on the Intrepid. And I remember my brother going to it, who was the who started dancing before I did, and uh, thinking it was like the coolest thing. And I had an opportunity to, to chat with some of the folks at the Intrepid uh, during a lecture my dad was giving there and just said, hey, we should do a, a big swing dance on the flight deck and they thought it was a great idea, and it took about two years to make that happen. And then we did the first one um, in 2016. And every year, what we do is we bring in three big bands, and we build a 50-foot stage on the flight deck, which is no easy feat. Uh, we put down a very large dance floor. It's grown from 2,000 square feet to 3,500 square feet. And it's an open-air, outdoor extravaganza. And then... Um, we uh, we also have a downstairs in the uh, in the lower level, and on the hangar we have a smaller stage where we have uh, smaller bands as well. And so every year we have three big bands, uh, at least one or two smaller bands, plus a whole bunch of other performers. It ends up being something like 50 musicians on stage, uh, you know, almost 100 people all together. So it's a very large event. It was the largest that we've ever done. We've averaged somewhere between 1,200 and 1,500 people. Uh, each show and every year we kind of streamlined it and got a little bit uh, better at doing such a large scale event and we had a wonderful team over at the Intrepid helping us out and it was one of the few events that they actually um, work on uh, producing themselves so we co-produced this together between Provision Productions and the Intrepid Museum. So um, it's obviously grown. It became a, a very, very popular event, probably other than Midsummer Night Swing. It's the, the largest swing dance that's happening in the city. Um, and uh, so we're very sad not to be doing that this year, but that's why we are here and we are so glad you are joining us. Um, we really have a, an amazing lineup tonight. Uh, I'm just going to run you through our list quickly. We're going to have the Bathtub Ginnies. Uh, we have the Manhattan barbershop quartet. We're also going to do a very informal fashion contest with uh, Dandy Wellington, who often emceed our Battle of the Big Bands. We also are bringing back Marlo Gamora to do some cocktails, and uh, he joined us as well every year. Then uh, we have Bria Skomberg, who was with us last year in the Sisterhood of Swing. And then um, we have a debut video uh, from last year, which we're going to premiere as well. And then Ayel Villeneuve has put together a big band track for us to uh, to debut as well. And uh, he's coming to us live in Paris a little bit later. Then we're gonna do a very informal dance competition with Gabby Cook. And then we're gonna finish up with uh, Gordon Webster. And uh, and then we're gonna do an after party, which uh, we started doing a couple weeks ago. And um, what that means is that uh, you can let us know on the chat on the side uh, if you'd like to participate and uh, join in on the video. And then uh, we'll, we'll kind of add everyone in and it'll be like a big dance party. And uh, we actually might start that a little bit earlier this time. Uh, Gordon Webster said he might wanna have us start that during his thing. And um, we're also gonna do a shim sham during that after party. So we've got a lot in store for you tonight, um, but we're gonna go right now to our first guest. And um, he is uh, with us in Philadelphia and um, as I mentioned earlier, we're, we're doing a, uh, a partnership with uh, a group there. Um, Drew is uh, working with the uh, uh, Veterans Radiothon and we're giving a portion of tonight's donations uh, to them. And uh, Drew runs a very, very fine band called the Midnight Society in Philadelphia, does lots of dances and vintage events. So uh, let's head over to Drew right now, live in Philadelphia. How's it going, Drew? 
Hey, Patrick, it's going. How about you? Doing all right. Doing all right. Um, so uh, how are things in Philly? It, it, it is. It, there's chaos. I, I've heard helicopters nonstop for the last uh, several hours, but we don't need to talk about that. I'm sure you're going to hear about it on the news momentarily. Well, um, let's talk about some music then. Uh, so tell us a little bit about the Midnight Society. Uh, the Midnight Society is just rounded the corner um, a little bit. We're, uh, we're coming up on a little over our first decade as a band. Right. And that's a, a great achievement alone. Just, you know, finding the right people that you can work with and make music with over that long a period of time and still keep it fresh. And, you know, we're still coming up with new ideas and we're still finding tunes that we haven't played yet. Great. And you do a combination of dances and just, you know, playing trash. Anything and everything from weddings to wakes. It's just, <laughs> it's, it's, it's a wide, a wide varied market. And I, you know, I, I just like to say, you never know what you're going to play next. Very cool. So what are you going to play next? Speaking of. Well, uh, so far I've put back together the one man band here. Uh, I've been working on uh, uh, what you're about to see next. It's about to get weird in here. All right, let's get weird. All right, this is one of my favorite songs. It's called Never Swat a Fly. Oh, not that one. Um, this was written by the great trio of writers known as uh, Henderson, Brown, and De Silva. Ray Henderson, Lou Brown, and Buddy G. De Silva. And this is one of my favorite songs in the whole world. It's called um, Never Swat a Fly. Very cool, thank you. made me so tender I now appreciate every little creature on this earth that has a mate oh once I could not stand spiders I couldn't even stand a bee now here is a motto that I follow faithfully never spot a fly he may love another fly he may sit with her and sigh the way I do with you. Oh, don't you harm a nip with a great big can of flip. He may have another in it that he says has it like I do with you. Don't you harm a bee while he is flying through the air. You may be concluding some terrific love affair. I'm an ant in the middle of a plant. He may want to, but he can't the way I do with you. while they play they may want to make hey hey the way i do with you, with you. all right thank you clinkers and all that was never swat a fly i love that song and if you didn't like that one you are most assuredly going to hate the next one ladies and gentlemen this is a tune that was written by 
one of the ultimate fathers of songwriting himself, Mr. Irving Berlin, and it's one of his most beautiful, and it's one of those songs that has become a jazz standard and stood the test of time, as it were. This is entitled, How Deep is the Ocean? Hey, Drew, why don't you tell us a little bit about the Radiothon? Uh, so uh, I mentioned it briefly earlier, but you've worked with them for a few years now, right? Yeah, this is, I believe, our fourth or fifth year working with WMGK, which is, oddly enough, a classic rock station out of the Philadelphia area on a 102.9 FM. As long as it's vintage, I guess. It's cool, right? Yeah, I was going to say, it's vintage to a degree, so the hell with it, you know? So they do a Veterans Radiothon every year? Yep, and it goes to the Philadelphia Veterans Multi-Service Center, and which, as we all know, that amongst the homeless and the people that are really affected are the veterans. And we, I, you know, they're just some of the most underrepresented and just not help them. We, it's just something that we like to do every year around Memorial Day. And we've actually started doing more of them just because it's become a national thing and it's been successful. And, hey, it's just good to help out. Well, that's great. Well, we are uh, uh, going to be giving a portion of our donations tonight to them, as you know, and uh, we thank you for thank you guys us with them. 
Um, now tell us just briefly, you're doing a lot of uh, live online shows. So give us a little rundown on that. Oh, it's, it really started the first week that I started losing work. I started going stir crazy as I'm wont to do. And uh, cause I just can't sit still for more than 30 seconds. And I just started, I figured hit the live button, went live on Facebook. It was a hit overnight more or less. And so I started doing Thursday, Friday and Saturdays on my own personal page from nine to 10 Eastern, of course. Every week you do three days a week. Yep. I mean, it's when I, I tried to taper it off because it was, you know, I thought there was some light weeks. And I was like, ah, I just don't want to keep bombarding people with this crap. I mean, with music. <laughs> like, uh, I tried to cut it down and immediately was getting letters and stuff. And people were like, why are you doing that? No, keep it three, three nights a week. It's keeping us sane. I'm like, okay, if it's keeping you sane, it's keeping me sane. There you go. It's, we've definitely been finding that uh, as well on our end that a lot of people really appreciate the, the live performances happening. So, you know, we, we actually got to move along. Um, we really appreciate you joining us and uh, sharing some of your music. Uh, again, we, uh, we appreciate you hooking us up with the Radiothon folks and giving to the veterans. Um, and uh, best of luck to you, Drew. And uh, we will see you again soon, I hope. Oh, very much so. Thanks for having me, everybody. Cheers. Take care, uh, Pat. Take care, everyone. Great. That's uh, again, that's uh, Drew Nugent and the Midnight Society coming to us live in um, Philadelphia. And uh, uh, he is doing live shows three nights a week. And he also was uh, kind enough to help us connect with the Veterans Association there. And a portion of tonight's proceeds are going to go to to them. So we're going to move along and we have our uh, dance performance coming up. Um, with uh, none other than the Bathtub Jinnies. And uh, they are not only an awesome uh, trio of chorus gals, but uh, we were fortunate enough that their very first performance was at one of our events back uh, in, uh, I don't even know, when we were at Urbo, was that 2016, I think? And um, the girls uh, got together to do a performance and everyone loved it so much, they just kept doing it. And now it's a thing and they perform all over. And uh, we've been very fortunate to have them every year on The Intrepid. They do a routine and uh, they're, they're some of our favorite performers. So let's say hello and head over to, uh, to Brooklyn to say hi to Rachel. Hey, Rachel. Hi, Patrick. How are you? Going. Good. Yeah, so um, we love performing on The Intrepid. It's a tradition for us. Um, and one of the things that we like the most about it is uh, we do something a little different every year, which is we learn a tap routine and we're not primarily a tap um, group. I personally never put on a pair of tap shoes until I was 27. So uh, it's always a fun challenge, um, but that's like an annual tradition for us. So today, this year, we didn't learn a tap routine. Also, so our neighbors downstairs, you know, wouldn't yeah, murder us. Um, <laughs> have been challenged with how to practice uh, in that situation. Yeah, but, but that's uh, what the first video is. It's actually our tap routine from 2018 um, to Artie Shaw's Back Bay Shuffle. And it was choreographed for us by Ray Hesselink. All right, so we are going to uh, view that now. And uh, here we go from 2018, the bathtub Ginny is on the Intrepid. Thank <laughs> you. 
Very cool, very cool. Uh, please introduce the ladies uh, since... Uh... Yeah, so um, there are three founding members of which I'm one, I'm Rachel McMullen. And our other two performers are Stina Dallins and Adrian Wider. And uh, we do sometimes, we've had to sub out some gigs in the past when um, we're otherwise occupied. So there are about probably 10 Jennies in the whole world, but uh, we're the original trio. Um, yeah, and we do everything ourselves. We, uh, we well, other than the tap routine, um, we choreograph everything, we costume everything, we get our own gigs. So. It's a small, uh, yeah, Stina just put in the chat, occupied, AKA pregnant. Yeah, so Stina had to miss one of the uh, intrepid years because she was, you know, baking a baby. So that <laughs> happens sometimes. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, and um, so I think we have one more video to show you. This actually we created for this event tonight. Um, and it's our first, as a group, it's our first video project where the end goal was for it to be shown as a video. A uh, totally different set of challenges, but we all have a lot of time. So we took it on um, and we uh, were really fortunate to find our editor through Danny Janacucci at this event a few weeks ago. He uh, used Josh Plotner to edit his amazing Bizet Had His Day video. And so we jumped on that bandwagon and uh, we also used Josh to edit this piece. Uh, and it's uh, Midnight in a Madhouse. And the costumes will look familiar from the last video. It's continuity. It's continuity, right? Yeah, it's all one show. <laughs> <laughs> all right, here we go. The debut of Midnight in a Madhouse by the Bathtub Jinnies. <laughs> Awesome, awesome, bravo. Yeah, so, thanks. These are always in costume, right? All the time. Yeah, well, you know, I mean, when people are looking at us, I can't show you all the 
really unflattering photos I have of myself in sweatpants on my couch, just like stuffing my face from the last three months. But those exist as well. <laughs> well that was an awesome video. It's so, it's so interesting to see how um, artists do their thing translated to this strange world we're living in right now. And, and thank you for, for putting that together and, and exploring strange new territories. So are you guys doing any other online things that we should know about? Um, well, as, uh, as you know, and as has been mentioned on this before, Stina's doing her solo jazz classes Tuesday, Thursday, Sunday nights. Um, and as a group, we don't have anything else lined up. This is our first like Ginny project of uh, Rona time. But, you know, maybe we'll do more because I think sometimes it's just getting over the, the hump of, you know, yeah. like we were talking about earlier, just like you asked us to do it. And we were like, well, I guess here's a reason to solve this problem. So now we've done it once. Um, and it seems a little less scary to do it again. So the longer this goes on, the more motivated we are to put something else together. Well, we hope it will be soon that we get to see you live, but um, uh, thank you for, for putting this together and, and we're glad we're able to help make that happen. And, um, you know, please uh, add the Ginny's information and all your own information in the chat on the side so people can check you out on Instagram and, and all the other online. Oh, places. and we just started our YouTube channel. I almost forgot. Yeah. It's my job to promote it. Um, <laughs> so we, uh, the, all the videos were on the internet somewhere, but like we put them all in one place. So if you want to see more things like that from past performances and that video, um, there's now a Bathtub Ginny's YouTube channel. So please subscribe. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you again, Rachel. And uh, we hope to see you soon. Cheers. All right. That's uh, Rachel from the Bathtub Ginnies. And uh, we got to see the debut of their first quarantine video. And, um, and that was, uh, I'm sure they'll be posting it live very soon. And uh, if you're just joining us, welcome. My name is Patrick from Prohibition Productions. And uh, we're celebrating the fifth anniversary of the intrepid battle of the big bands. And um, we have a, a lot more in store for you tonight. Just want to remind you, if you haven't done so already, that uh, we are accepting donations and we're going to be splitting that amongst all of our performers that you see tonight. And uh, we're also going to be giving a portion to the Veterans Radiothon in Philadelphia. And uh, so we're going to move along and uh, have uh, another musical guest or I should say a quartet of guests. Um, every year on The Intrepid, as you were entering, uh, we had a wonderful barbershop quartet welcome you before you boarded the ship. And uh, uh, they did the last two years on The Intrepid. Um, they're based out of uh, New Jersey and they're called the Manhattan, Mad Hatton Quartet. Um, so we're first gonna say hello to Spencer. How's it going? Hi, Patrick. And then we have Alexander. Hey, Alexander. Hey, Patrick. All right. Good to be here. Thanks for joining us. So um, I'm going to go over to Spencer uh, first. Tell us a little bit about the quartet. Well, um, just a, a little correction that the other three are definitely going to give me um, some grief over. We are technically based out of Manhattan, although two of us are in New Jersey. Uh, <laughs> no, no problem at all. Um, we've been singing together as a quartet for about four years, and we love to uh, to do music from uh, different era, uh, eras of history. But uh, we definitely have a, a sweet spot for the for uh, swing era and that that whole uh, period of time. Um, it really suits our particular musical style, um, and uh, we actually. Uh, have performed uh, twice at the Intrepid with uh, two different leads, uh, who is our singer of our melody, and Alexander is our, our newest lead. We're, we're so glad to have had him uh, in the past and and then again now. Uh, so um, <laughs> we're really looking forward to showing off some of what we've got for you uh, tonight. We've got the premiere of two new videos we've made in quarantine. Uh, both of them are uh, arranged by um, our own members. Um, uh, the first one we've got is uh, called Everybody Loves My Baby. It's a song written in 1924 by Spencer Williams, a talented gentleman I'm happy to share a name with. Uh, and uh, we base our interpretation on a uh, cover of the song by Boswell Sisters in 1932. And something that they like to do is uh, they have this little thing that we call the Boswell Babble where they sing really fast together. And they actually uh, do a reference to another song 
uh, called uh, Yes Sir, That's My Baby, uh, which you may be able to pick out of, from the lyrics. Uh, and then in that same fashion, Alexander and, and Max, who arranged the song, uh, added in a, a another reference to uh, a different song from the Aristocats called Everybody Wants to Be a Cat that we throw in near the end of the song. So keep your ears open. It's a, it's a great tune. We love singing it and making this video. Very much. Very cool. We're excited to check it out. So let's... Uh watch the debut of the Manhattan Quartet. Fun as happy as a king, I'm feeling good and everything is mine. Just like a bird in the spring, God. gotta let it out. It's my sweetie, can't you guess? Wild, Wild about them, I confess. Do I love them? Man. That's why I shout, why I shout. Hear me shout. Everybody loves my baby, but my baby don't love nobody but me. Nobody but me. Nobody but me. Nobody but me. Now everybody wants my baby, but my baby don't want nobody but me. Nobody but me. That's plain to see. That's plain to see now. But my baby kisses me upon my my cheeks. I just let those kisses be. Don't wash my face for weeks. Gross. Everybody loves my baby, but my baby don't love nobody but me. Nobody but me, nobody but me. Oh, nobody but me, nobody but me. Yes, sugar, do the cadets, make a dimmy, nigga, do sugar, do the cadets, make a dimmy, nigga, do sugar, do the cadets, make a dimmy, nigga, 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 so hear me when I say oh, Everybody loves my baby But my baby don't love nobody but me Nobody but me Everybody wants my baby But my baby don't want nobody but me That's plain, That's plain to see you know that Everybody loves my, my baby Everybody loves my baby now Everybody loves my baby Everybody loves my baby now Everybody loves my baby Everybody loves my baby Everybody loves my baby But my baby don't love nobody but me Yes sir, that's my baby No sir, don't me maybe Yes sir, that's my baby Right. That is awesome. <laughs> Bravo. Um, Thank you. So we, the, uh, the, the, name the other uh, members of the, of the group that we didn't, uh, we, we aren't chatting with. Sure, yeah. So starting from the lowest voice, we have uh, Richard Townsend. He's the, uh, the redhead. Uh, then we have me singing baritone, Spencer White. Uh, moving up from that, we have Alexander uh, Ronneberg, who sings lead. And then our highest voice uh, is Max Melman. Uh, and we've been singing together now for, uh, for a good uh, four years. <laughs> oh, very cool, very cool. So up next, we have a, uh, something a little bit different. Now this is a, um, uh, it's part of a musical. And so I think Alexander's gonna tell us about that. Let's, uh, so what is this? Sure, this is a project that I began working on pre-COVID. Um, it was the idea was a podcast musical, right? Combine the popularity of podcasts with the popularity of musical theater and find a new way to deliver um, musical theater to fans. So I began writing it and it's very much in process. We've written the first episode and we're working on producing a demo of that episode right now. The podcast is called SS Splendor and it's about uh, a cruise ship and a family that takes a journey on that cruise ship. Um, and it has like a little bit of supernatural mystery element to it. And uh, you know, Broadway's closed right now, cruise ships are closed right now. So this gives you a little taste of both. Um, and our quartet, Manhattan, is featured as characters in the musical called The Fairweather Four. And this song is called Fair Winds and Following Tides. 
Okay, great. So uh, I guess this is going to be a fateful journey. We're only going to listen to about a little less than a minute of this. So uh, let's check it out, the Fair Weather 4. All aboard our ocean liner, we got fair winds and following tide. Soon you see there's nothing finer than sailing on the ocean wide. We're sure there's nothing hotter than being out in endless blue. Come get lost in tropic water, that's the thing to do. For travel and fun in the sun, well, you're just a call away. So call 555 and forget it all. 555-6344. You regret it. Call 555-6344 today. Ah, that was great. <laughs> so as you can tell, there's like kind of a vintage radio drama vibe to it. Uh, it was a little radio ad. And uh, and people can find this online somewhere? Yep. We're on Instagram and Facebook. You should find us if you search SS Splendor. Okay. Very cool. So we've got one more video um, of you guys. But, but first, I just wanted to, I'm just curious, what was your experience of performing on the Intrepid? How was that? Honestly, it was probably my favorite performance of last year. And that includes all of our competitions and gigs and, you know, chapter shows. Um, it, it was like a magical experience on this venue that you kind of transformed in a way that made it feel like we were all time traveling together. And everyone was so committed to that. Um, it just created this magical atmosphere that, you know, I miss a lot. I'm going to share a photo, one of my favorites from last year, of, of the quartet singing on the flight deck as people were uh, boarding. And I think it's a wonderful photo and really captures the moment as well as the uh, just the, the amazing location. Uh, and uh, yeah. So uh, what's, what's your last piece that you have for us? Our last tune is Mood Indigo. This is my arrangement that I did before I even joined Manhattan, but then uh, after joining the group, you know, they kind of took it to the next level. Um, it is, you know, a jazz standard by Duke Ellington and Barney Biggard. And uh, again, this is my arrangement of Mood Indigo. Oh, here we go. When your life seems dull and hideous And your prospects simply piteous The whole world takes on a monochromatic hue when the dawn has lost its radiance and the rainbow's lost its gradients, who can help but take a melodramatic view? What else can you do? Blue can be when I 
again that moon indigo. indigo I could lay me down and die no no Awesome. Bravo. Bravo. And uh, Spencer, you guys are killing it on the video thing. If that's a, a new uh, format for you guys, you should definitely do a lot more. Yeah, this is the, the first time that we've, we've done a four part uh, video like that. Uh, props out to Max for putting the whole thing together. Um, uh, really, really proud of that and proud of uh, all the work that we've been putting in. And thank you so much for giving us a platform to release it on. It's really Absolutely. exciting to see it come out and see all of the, the positive responses that we're getting already. <laughs> cool. Well, uh, please. Uh, so where can we find you guys online? Like, do you have any other thing that you want to yeah, talk about? Yeah, we, we have an Instagram. It's uh, at Manhattan Quartet. And then uh, we also have this Facebook, which I've linked to in the chat. I'll do it again in just a second. Awesome. Um, uh, yeah, uh, we're hoping to have a YouTube channel soon. <laughs> we'll keep you posted. Well, very cool. And then uh, I'm just going to switch over to Alexander quickly. We want to thank you again for uh, and a great job on the arrangements. And um, and we hope to have you guys back sometime soon. And hopefully we can uh, sing again on the Intrepid. Yes, I hope so too. Thank you so much for having us. And congratulations to all the other amazing performers. All right. Thank you so much. Again, that's the uh, Mad Hatton Quartet, uh, the Barbershop Quartet that's performed uh, for the last couple of years on the Intrepid. And um, and wonderful to hear that such uh, creativity and uh, uh, it's wow wonderful. So we're gonna move along to another intrepid tradition. Um, every year uh, we've had a fashion contest of sorts. It's been sort of uh, fashion parade, and uh, we choose people that are dressed up. We walk around the uh, the flight deck and all over the Intrepid and uh, we pick a pool of people and then um, bring them out for a, a fashion stroll. And then, uh, and usually we have a couple of winners. So we decided to do something a little bit more, uh, in tribute to that, obviously a bit more informal. For that, we are gonna go to um, uh, one of the most stylish guys and one of our favorite people. He's been emceeing many of our events for, for a very long time and he's uh, emceed the intrepid whenever he's in town so we're going to go up to harlem and say hello to the one and only dandy wellington hey dandy how's it going you all right doing all right how about you i'm doing all right little by little uh how's everybody doing it's good to see you my name is dandy wellington it is a pleasure and an honor to be in front of you on what is was honestly a beautiful sunny day here in new york city Regardless of what's going on, regardless of the difficulty we're all feeling, uh, the sun is still shining and we do have each other. So uh, let's just, let's stay together, baby. Let's stay together. Beautifully said, beautifully said. I noticed, now we're both wearing the same pin. Uh, obviously you can't see mine, but you can see Dandy's. 
and uh, I wear this to many, many events, and it says vintage style, not vintage values. And this is a pin that Dandy sells. So tell us about this. Um, so I actually just did a video sort of explaining vintage style, not vintage values, and all, um, all of my perspectives around that, the history of it, how it came to be, how it got became a, a phrase and a hashtag within the zeitgeist of the vintage community. But basically, um, my perspective on it is uh, that though my clothes and my style may be old timey, my perspective on social issues are not that I am against racism, misogyny, bigotry, um, and I respect uh, the the choice and uh, the life of um, the LGBTQ plus um, people of color all around, and of course uh, the Native Americans whose land that we live on. So that is pretty much uh, vintage style, not vintage values. In a nutshell, it is something that I live by and um, something that I encourage my friends to as well. Very beautifully said. We, we very much appreciate that. And I think it's, it's uh, part of the point of the Intrepid. And one of the most amazing parts was bringing so many people together and to stand up on that stage. And you and I have done this and you look out and it's like a thousand people of, from all walks of life, all colors and nationalities and races yeah. and, and it's everyone's just dancing and uh celebrating life and music and uh it's such a beautiful thing and um no absolutely i mean listen as uh as born and raised new yorkers you and i have seen the intrepid uh all of our lives yeah. and it, there's something really magical to be able to walk into a place that you've you've been to all your life you've seen it's always been a fixture and do something else, do something magical, you know, really uh, create a new memory uh, in that place. Yes. You know? So that, that's, that's what the intrepid battle of the big bands has always been to me. It's, it's incredible. And it's uh, with your help, it's been even more amazing. And, and we have this fashion contest that we've done every year. And yeah. um, so uh, tell us a little bit about, uh, about that. And I'm going to show um, some of the photos in the meantime uh, of, of our entrance. So the, uh, the fashion contest, I mean, to be honest, uh, even having a fashion contest at any of the Prohibition Productions events is, is almost like, what do you mean? Everybody's fashionable. That's really the situation. You walk into the room and you've got a uh, a hundred and it a hundred two hundred fifteen hundred if you're at the intrepid of the most fashionable people you've ever seen but the fashion contest during the battle of the big bands is is a great opportunity to really showcase some of the most creative some of the most well realized outfits um and so you know it's 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 a pleasure i most of the time I get dressed up for the Intrepid just because I know there's going to be a fashion contest. <laughs> so I got to step it up, you know? Yeah, you know, it's funny, actually, you're right. We don't, we actually don't call it usually a contest. We call it a parade. Yeah, right. Because uh, even though it's a battle of the big bands, the secret is that the bands aren't actually battling. They're just playing. That's and, exactly and, it. Uh, and the whole point is just to be together. So we, we did something a little bit, uh, a variation on that theme for this. And mm. uh, we asked folks to post photos of themselves and tag uh, Intrepid 2020 fashion. And uh, we're just going to show a couple of those. Yeah. Right now. And. Um, oh, we... my God, Boone. Uh, uh, Boone. Every year, every year, Boone just crushes it. Every day, Boone crushes it. Destiny looking fantastic. Oh, my God always crushing on her, haha. Ha. These two are fantastic. I love the red, I love the colors. And guys, I'm, I'm gonna talk about these two in just a moment. They're, <laughs> the masks, I'm like, my life is complete. By the way, folks, at this point, because we're all gonna be wearing masks in all situations, that custom game, you know, that coordination game, whether you're wearing sweatpants or plus fours, coordinating your mask with your outfit is the game. Coordinated and, one. and I just, uh, so good. Yeah. Yeah, this, so this, uh, this outfit is a, an entirely convertible outfit. 
So on the left, oh, yeah. this is the beginning, but then she built it to be all these different things. The sleeves come off and the, the skirt comes off. It's Come on, yeah. come on. That's awesome. So good. So um, our, our winner this, uh, this evening, I have to, oh my gosh, come on, classic red dress. And by the way, I have to say that this is all happening right now at seven o'clock. So everyone's applauding all over New York City for these fabulous people and their fabulous style. <laughs> Gosh, I love this. And the parasol, the parasol, it looks like it matches so elegant. Yeah, Tawny. Yeah, it's difficult. This is the thing is it, it doesn't end up ever being a competition. It's just like, you know, who, who blew our mind or who encapsulated these you know, these times <laughs> that we we're living in. Oh, that, I don't think that that counts. That's not. <laughs> I just threw that in there because I yeah. love that photo so much. <laughs> <laughs> Behind the only World War II uh, era aircraft on the Intrepid, actually. So. Yeah, indeed. And, and, a, and a diverse and fabulous group of ladies uh, um, gracing me with their presence. They are just so fabulous. Agent Wednesday and, and the whole crew over there. Absolutely, absolutely. So this um, this evening, our our winner um, is a fabulous couple, um, Rylan and Bonnie. Um, Rylan and Bonnie, are you guys in the chat? Just do a little wave. Do a little wave. Oh, there they are! Fantastic. How's it going, guys? It's going good. It's going well. <laughs> yeah, everyone's applauding all over wherever you are, you know, they're applauding for you. <laughs> well, and honestly, honestly, just, just so you guys know, of course, we need to applaud for those people that are, that are taking care of us, that are keeping us Absolutely. safe, that are Absolutely. keeping our city going, um, the essential workers that, um, many of whom, before this situation, a lot of us didn't realize how essential they were. And now it has become so clear, it's been put into sharper focus, how much our city is run by some of the most badass people ever. So thank you to the essential workers. So I really want to ask about um, the outfit and also about these masks. Please tell me. Oh. Um well, uh, we both work in uh, entertainment. Rylan works props for film and TV, and I work in costumes for theater. Oh so we're both furloughed until who knows when. Right. So it meant that I got to pull all my vintage patterns that I've always wanted to actually build out of storage and dust them off and actually build things. So um, I built the dress and had all the scraps and put all the scraps away in a bag so that uh, as I've been working on projects, I put the scraps away. So at the end, I'll be able to make a little quarantine quilt. Right. Um, and we woke up this morning and said, oh, shoot, you know, we have to do this contest. And I said, oh, I still have fabric. I can make masks. <laughs> <laughs> Very nice. And uh, I mean, you know, sort of in keeping with your professions, if you take a, a really good look at that photo, both props and costumes are represented. That yeah. plant, that's, uh, <laughs> what is that, the victory garden that you guys have going on? Uh, she's been making dresses and I've been gardening because I don't have anything else to do. Um, there you go. <laughs> I love it. I love that we're all finding our, uh, our, our own unique <laughs> skills in this, in this crazy time. Yeah. Well, you guys look fabulous. And, I, and here's, here's, uh, here's what I'm gonna do. When we get out of this craziness, mm -hmm. not, I mean, I'm not gonna make you, make you wait until we fully get out of it. When we can dip <laughs> a toe out of it, uh, I'll, you've got a round of drinks on me, wherever you want, we'll figure it out. Oh, look at okay. you, you already have it. You've already got a round. <laughs> Next round's on me. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks so much, guys. Thanks so much for posting. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. All, right, congrats. Thank you to all the contestants who posted. Thanks to everybody that showed off their fashion uh, today on, on Instagram and Facebook, but also right now. So Thank many of you me. I know look fantastic at home. So keep it up. And listen, sometimes uh, when times are tough, if you just get dressed 
if you just step out a little bit, it'll feel a little bit better. Oh, indeed. And speaking of which, tell us about some of your online activities and classes you're doing. Sure. Yeah, I'm. Um, I am. I am doing quite quite a lot. I feel like I'm. I'm pretty busy. Uh, Expect anything less. Well, you know, listen. Uh, we got to pivot. We got to. We got to. You know, recalibrate and readjust. And so, um, I have been starting online classes. Um, it's. Uh, I launched the Dandy class. Uh, about a month or so ago, doing wardrobe building classes and branding classes. And I'm getting ready to launch a, a, a dandy class elective called um, Menswear for Women, which is going to be coming up uh, probably in the next week or so. So stay tuned. Uh, that's all that stuff is at dandywellington.com. Um, I also have started a YouTube channel and, or I mean, I, I've, I've had a YouTube channel, but you know, now I'm digging in, you know what I mean? Now I'm digging in, now I'm really creating content. Um, so that is, is happening. And as, uh, as Rachel said, please subscribe. <laughs> uh, and then every Wednesday I have been spinning, I've been spinning records. I've just been doing a, a show called the rhythm casserole through, um, through DeKalb Market Hall in Brooklyn. It's sort of a lunchtime hop, an opportunity to play music from swing to soul to get people engaged during lunchtime so that you have a little bit of a midday retreat from whatever your routine is. So that's the Rhythm Casserole every Wednesday. Follow me on Instagram, follow me on Facebook. You know, I'll let you know. All right, man, there you have it. The one and only Dandy Wellington. Thank you so much for helping out with this today. I appreciate it. Thank you, Patrick. I want to give a shout out to all the musicians, all the artists, all the creators who are having a tough time at this time. Guys, we can do this. Seriously, we can do this. And remember, because remember, because uh, when this thing happened, where did everyone turn? They turned to artists. They turned to storytellers. They turned to creators. So keep it up. Keep creating because we're all listening. We're all watching and we're all ready to be inspired. Beautifully said. Thank you again, Dandy. And uh, we can't wait to see you uh, in the future and uh, get that round of drinks. Yeah, man. See you soon. <laughs> Thank you so much, guys. Have a good one. Uh, Dandy Wellington. And uh, we're getting to the end of our first half. We're running a little behind schedule. But before we take a short break, we are going to... Uh, move over to some cocktails and uh and our next guest is uh is one of our favorite one of our favorite guys he uh not only is an amazing bartender he was a bartender over at cafe dante which is one of the top cocktail bars in the world but he also has been a brand ambassador for various uh brands over the years and uh when we had the intrepid uh every year he would join us at the time he was working for saint germain so you often would see him there and uh, we, he would be doing drinks in the VIP section. Um, so he is no stranger to the Intrepid. And let's uh, head over right now to the one and only Marlo Gamora. Hey, Marlo. Hey, how's it going? How's it going? Uh, just wanted to say hi to all of uh, Prohibition Productions. Thanks for having me. Um, what's up, Dandy? Awesome spot. Always nice to see your face. Um, so, yeah, as, as some of you know, my name is Marlo Gamora. I am the brand ambassador for now Santa Teresa Rum. And, you know, since the sun is coming down, I figured, you know, let's let's go with something like really nice and classic, a little boost forward, but also refreshing and also quite versatile. So we're going to do a, a rum, a Santa Teresa rum old fashioned. Um, an old fashioned is pretty much spirits. Uh, it's a spirit, bitter and a sweetener. So you could adjust accordingly. So traditionally you would have Santa Teresa or any kind of spirit, a little bit of sweetener, and then whatever like Angus or bitters. But I'm gonna do a different take on that because I'm kind of feeling this little heat right now and it's, there's a little bit of humidity in the air. So what I'm gonna do is gonna take uh, this Mexican chili syrup and do about a quarter of an ounce of that. And you're gonna just pour that into your mixing glass. And then I have this Mexican mole bitters, just to give it like, just to round it out as far as like, give it a little bit of a chocolate note. 
and then of course, two ounces of Santa Teresa rum. Now, Santa Teresa is a Venezuelan rum. Um, it's been family owned for about 200 years. And, um, and in this bottle, you'll get anywhere from four to 35 years of aged. And it's all blended rum, producing one hacienda, all in one, uh, all in one area between the sugar cane to the distillation to the fermentation to all the aging is all done in one hacienda. So uh, this is very special. There's a lot of history to it. It's probably one of the driest rums you'll have. Um, that's why it works really well in an old fashioned. So you could adjust the sweetness accordingly so it doesn't come off too sweet. Um, there are some rums out there that could be heavily sweet. So you just want to adjust accordingly. But with this one, you, you want to do like a proper quarter of an ounce of uh, sweetener. So you just pour it into the mixing glass like so. Then ice that baby up. And give it a little stir. Um, you give it about, I'd like to say about a 10 second stir because you're gonna pour it over ice and you don't wanna over dilute it. Okay. Then you're gonna take your strainer and then pour it into a rocks glass with fresh ice. And I could just smell the caramel notes and the vanillas and that little bit of heat and that mole bitters in there. And then we're going to garnish it with an orange twist. So you're just going to express the oils right on top of the glass. So because that, that little bit of orange really complements the, the chili, the root complements the rum, complements all the vanillas in there, and complements the chocolate as well. So a nice little sipper drink to get you on your way as you take a break. Um, I'd like to thank uh, Patrick for having me on. Uh, thanks to the Prohibition Production. Shout out to all the performers tonight. Um, be sure to tip them well or make a donation. Support your local artists, support your local bars and restaurants. This is Marlo Gamora with Santa Teresa signing off. Thank Cheers. you so much, Marlo. And uh, I'm gonna actually show a couple of awesome photos of Marlo at the Intrepid uh, from the last couple of years. And, uh, of course, with our lovely pinup gals. So thank you again, Marlo. Um, it's been a pleasure seeing you again. That cocktail looks fantastic. Can't wait to have oh, one of those. Oh, it's so good right now. I, really, I was thirsting for it already. Oh, well, uh, you know, I think I need to go get a drink myself. We are going to uh, – <laughs> thanks again, Marlo. We'll see you soon. So, All right. Take care. Good night. All right. Good night, man. So we're uh, we're at, at our intermission. We're running a little behind schedule, but we're going to take a short break right now. And, uh, and we have a whole bunch more performers coming up. Um, so what that means is that we're going to uh, sign off for a little bit, um, but we're going to uh, go back to some of our live music that we recorded at the Intrepid um, over the last uh, couple of years. And... Um, we uh, also uh, put together a little slideshow of uh, videos from um, of photos over the last couple of years on the Intrepid, some of our favorite photos. So we're going to leave you with that. Give us uh, maybe six, seven minutes, and uh, we will be back uh, very, very shortly. And uh, in the meantime, grab a drink, and uh, we'll see you shortly. Oh my, do I say, honey, did I do? Do I want you? Oh my, say, do I, honey, did I do?
Right, and uh, we are back, and want to thank you for joining us for the sixth quarantine speakeasy, coming to you live from New York City. Uh, my name is Patrick Soluri with Prohibition Productions, and uh, today we are celebrating the fifth anniversary of the intrepid battle of big bands one of our biggest and most popular events of the year and uh usually our our normal events are with live bands and we do over 120 events a year performing with many uh different restaurants and bars and of course everything is closed down right now and we're all in quarantine so we've decided to put this show together and we've been doing it every week uh, on Saturdays and this is our sixth week doing it so uh, it's been a whole new territory for us and uh, we've been learning a lot because we are not video people and uh, it's like producing a live TV show uh, without all those other folks but um, we're figuring it out because we want to bring everyone together and I think especially now um, in these difficult times, the community is very important, uh, trying to support and help uh, all the musicians and performers that lost all of their work. Um, and, uh, and tonight's a very special night for us since uh, Intrepid is not happening and it's probably the biggest event where we get to, to pull some of our favorite performers together. And um, as, uh, as Dandy Wellington was saying earlier, 
Um, he has these fabulous pens, which both of us are wearing. You can get them from him. It says vintage styles, not vintage values. I think uh, it's important right now uh, to, to be showing that. Um, and I also want to just say how important it is for everyone that's been uh, giving donations. Um, it's really helped a lot, of, uh, a lot of us and musicians and performers who are out of work. And, um, and uh, we've been averaging about 46 to 49 percent each event of uh, people giving donations. So we, we encourage you to, to send something in. Uh, we split it amongst everyone who's performing tonight. And then uh, we're also sending a portion of that to the Veterans Radiothon in uh, Philadelphia. And um, the, uh, the Intrepid is usually part of uh, Fleet Week on Memorial Day weekend. So we felt that was a very important thing to do this week. Uh, and speaking of donations, I also wanted to, to mention that we've had some extremely generous people. And I just want to read a list of names, uh, people that have, have essentially given $50 or more. And while we suggest a $5 minimum donation, some people have really gone uh, above and beyond that. Um, and so I just want to send out a thank you. Uh, we've got here, um, I'm going to do this in alphabetical order. Andrew Osno, Ann Abramson, Barbara Greenberg, Carol Simmons, Judy Stewart, Kristen Simonetti, Leslie Bauer, Margaret Jacobs, Mark and Kathy Briscoe, Pam Davis, Paul Irvin, Peter Minton, Robert Shannon, Stephanie Robinson, Stephen Wright, Susan Poindexter, and T. Yi Lu. So we thank you uh, for, for, for all of you who have given uh, very generously, and uh, we've been able to split that up. And one of the things I also wanted to mention is we've... Um, We've been collecting money each week to send to a fellow musician who got very, very sick from the virus. Uh, his name is Ron Wilkins, and he was uh, in the intensive care and on a ventilator for several weeks. Um, he's not only played with IL's band, IL Donor's band, um, Ian Hutchinson, um, my band, The Hot Toddies. Uh, amazing, amazing guy. He was very, very sick, and we were all very scared. But he is in recovery, and he is out of the hospital, or he is... He's doing better. I'm not sure if he's in the hospital or not. I think he's in a different facility right now, but he is doing a uh, GoFund, uh, GoFundMe campaign to help with his medical bills. And uh, we just sent him $300 through the GoFundMe, which is uh, collected from the donations that we've been doing over the last few, few weeks. So we encourage you to, to help him out. And, um, and, and it's important to do the donations because it helps many, many people out. So again, you can uh, send that through PayPal, Venmo, or Zelle. Uh, I'll post the information again on the side. You can also find it on our Facebook page and our website as well as on the registration page. Um, so we're going to move along. We've got some more live music. And uh, we're very excited about our next guest. And uh, many of you know her from various performances and, and places. She's a, uh, she was a co-producer with Prohibition Productions on the Gotham Jazz Festival. Uh, you saw her last year on The Intrepid with the all-female big band called The Sisterhood of Swing. And then they also performed at uh, Midsummer Night Swing. I believe that was two years ago. And she's an amazing uh, trumpeter, amazing teacher. And she's also the... Uh, the, the uh, uh, New York Hot Jazz Camp. She is one of the run uh, founders of that, which our very first show was about the Gotham Jazz Festival and Molly was with us. But Bria was not available, but we have her now and we are uh, very excited to have her. So let's go over to Bria. Hey, Bria. Hi, Patrick. Hi, everybody. It's so good to see you and feel everybody out there in the yeah. interwebs. <laughs> I'm seeing how you can really feel that, uh, you know, it is. The spidey senses are up. All the good little, little lights, little heartbeats. I feel it all. And it's nice to have your eyes and your ears tonight. Thanks for tuning in. So how have you been during all this? You've been playing and doing some online stuff. What's, what's going yeah, on? You know, all things considered, I've been, I've been very fortunate. I'm fine. I, get, I have natural light through my windows and I have a place that I can play trumpet and my neighbors are very understanding. So I feel very grateful for those things. Uh, many people, most people close to me are healthy <laughs> and such. Um, yeah, and, and keeping busy. I mean, I think like you, I mean, you're, you're a make it happen kind of person. I'm happy that my first reaction was, okay, not what can't I do, but what, what can I do right now? 
And so I have been doing twice weekly Facebook live sessions, master classes, uh, just different interviews with people all over the world, collaborative projects uh, with musicians. So I think the real trick right now is that now that it's been going for a couple of months and it's clearly extended, it's how do I take the next two months and stretch that into 10 or 12 or two years, who knows? <laughs> you know. Right. We're thinking more about projects, but ultimately I've been staying positive and loving just being able to connect with people old and new through, through digital means. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we're doing what we can and we're glad that you're joining us. So what do you, what do you have in store for us? You know, it's, there's so many things that I, I love to play, but I think right now there's a lot of to process <laughs> and thankfully we have the arts for that very meaning, uh, for that very purpose. And so I think, you know, in sort of a New Orleans tradition, I'm going to improvise. I'm going to improvise something that lets me just sit back on the maybe melancholic frustration parts of these moments and then erupt into something joyous. And if any, and for those of you who are at home, by all means dance or grab some kitchen utensils and jam along. Uh, I will feel that. I will hear that too. And we'll have our own little seated or stand, <laughs> parade. Awesome. So I'm going in. <laughs> you know yeah. <laughs> times of confinement i think that's a big part of it for me making music is just being able to just just play and i encourage anybody at home whether you're a professional musician or not like find your outlet you know find your way to express something whatever it is that you're feeling right now <laughs> yeah oh so beautifully said so tell us a little bit about the sisterhood of swing we had it last year on the uh as one of the main big bands on the stage and it was really really awesome and uh, we've been playing some live recordings and we heard a couple track. I think the first one on the break was with Champion Fulton and yeah. a killer band. Yeah, seeing those pictures and hearing those sounds, I was like, wow, that sounds really good. Oh, wait, that's our band. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, Sisterhood of Swing is a very special project because it was instigated a couple of years ago. Lincoln Center, as we all know, has Midsummer's Night Swing. And Jill Sternheimer came to me and said, we want to do a tribute to the International Sweethearts of Rhythm. Those of you who aren't familiar, they were the first integrated all-female jazz band that did a lot of touring in the 1940s. Of course, broke down many barriers and just paved the way with some hard, hard swing and big band music. 
And so I was so happy that she called me to think about putting it together. And to be honest, my first reaction was, oh gosh, I don't know if I want to lead a big band. <laughs> like, we'll talk to A.L. Vilner about that. <laughs> you know, I have a hard enough time getting five people in one spot, but uh, let alone myself. Uh, but uh, just the opportunity was too good to pass up. And so we, yeah, over the last couple, couple of years, we played Lincoln Center twice. And last year, the Intrepid, the Battle of the Bands was, was such an amazing highlight. The night was perfect. Uh, you know, there are, we had 13 pieces and they're all, mo everybody's a New York based musician, except Chloe Firanzo would come up from New Orleans to play Barry Sax and clarinet as, as she does so well. And, uh, also a wonderful vocalist within the ensemble, Champion Fulton, uh, of course, Molly Ryan. I do a little swing and slinging and some harmonies. It's just a blast. I'm going to put up a couple of photos um, from uh, uh, from last year. And uh, it's um, such a it was such a beautiful, beautiful moment. Uh, I showed this a little bit earlier, but check this one out. Yeah, that's the real spirit of collaboration there. And then, uh, and then that's you there. <laughs> I'm having fun. <laughs> you know, I, it's hard to explain, but wow, playing and singing in front of a large ensemble is like, it's like flying. You know, you've got the biggest winds the, just pushing you forward. It's so, it's so much fun. And then, you know, when you're looking out on a thousand dancers all decked out on a ship <laughs> there was really nothing quite like it so thank you thank you for doing that thank you for that opportunity oh, and uh, we're looking forward to the next one <laughs> i think we all are um so we've we got you got one more thing for us tell us about that tonight oh i um well as i mentioned you know i've been doing these facebook live sessions and like you again it's not what can't i do it's what can i do and so i've been i've been playing more keyboard i've been setting up my home studio much like you i've got some shakers ukuleles different things so i'm gonna play and sing a little bit on this you know get what you pay for folks <laughs> but, but again i hope that you will i hope that maybe you'll sing along to this uh of course wartime era song that i mean with all my heart <clears throat> we'll meet again don't know when don't know when but i know we'll meet again some sunny day or on a battleship in the middle of manhattan perhaps oh keep smiling through just like you always do Till the blue skies chase the dark clouds far away. And will you please say hello to the friends that I know? Tell them I won't be long. They'll be happy to know that as you saw me go, I was singing this song. We'll meet again, don't know where, don't know when, but I know we'll meet again some sunny day. Yeah. There it is. I know it's not, it's not if, it's when. And I'm looking forward to it and all those meanwhiles I'm just happy to happy to see you and feel you this way thank you guys yeah, well, thank you so much bria been a pleasure to have you uh with us for a little bit and uh we can't wait to see you again all right be well stay safe stay happy and stay inspired <laughs> thank you <laughs> bye everybody again that's uh bria skomberg and uh pleasure having her and last year she had the sisterhood of swing on the intrepid battle of the big bands and uh speaking of big bands and intrepid um we're going to debut uh, a video tonight. So uh, every year on the Intrepid, we, we have a video crew and they shoot um, the entire night and then they edit together a promotional video. Uh, and um, and we're going to debut that tonight. It took us a while to get this together. And then, uh, then the, you know, as the pandemic hit, uh, it didn't feel appropriate to put it out there. So uh, we decided that we're just going to do this right now. And... Um, 
So we also uh, uh, have a, uh, the music track is actually a live track that was uh, recorded that night. And it was, um, uh, it's coming, it's by Jonathan Stout. And, um, and you'll hear uh, at the end how very live it is. So here we go with the, uh, the debut of our 2019 Battle of the Big Bands video. Folks, welcome, welcome to the Intrepid. It's a night of swinging. It's a night of great music and the Battle of the Bands. We got three incredible big bands. You ready? It's that time. Let's get on the floor of the Jonathan Stout Orchestra. Have it. That's the de debut of the video from last year's Intrepid Battle of the Big Bands. And uh, uh, in case that wasn't clear, what happened there at the very end, um, as uh, as Jonathan Stott was finishing one of his numbers, there was a giant cruise ship docked at the next uh, port over, and it it saw that we were having this massive party on the Intrepid, and just started honking the the horn. And uh, it happened right at the end of the song. And everyone went crazy. And then the band, of course, all the musicians started joining in and trying to find the pitch and messing around with it. And it was it was a really magical moment. And uh, I was glad we were able to catch it, catch it there. And um, uh, who you saw there was the Harlem Renaissance Orchestra, uh, the Sisterhood of Swing and the Jonathan Stout Orchestra. Uh, you saw parts of the dance contest, the fashion contest. We had Kate and the Critters downstairs who joined us last week on the live stream, as well as the Bathtub Ginnies. Um, and then uh, we had the Harvest Moon Hoppers, which was a dance performance by Bobby White's group uh, with Jessica. And then we had the Intrepid Swing Brigade, which we do every year. We choreograph it. Uh, we commission a different choreographer to uh, choreograph some music specifically to uh, for the Intrepid. And a really magical night. Um, 
and we're going to be posting that uh, probably tomorrow, uh, so you can check that out. And um, also, I just wanted to mention, uh, so uh, obviously, we're not doing the Intrepid this year. Um, and uh, we were getting a lot of questions about that, um, you know, starting almost right afterwards. Uh, but we, we actually found out that the Intrepid didn't want to do the Battle of the Big Bands anymore. And um, uh, they decided this before the, uh, the pandemic hit. And uh, obviously that was uh, very hard news for us. It seems that, you know, they didn't really, uh, or some of the upper management didn't, who've never been to the event, didn't quite understand what a special event it was, how much it means to the community. Um, and, and they felt it was a lot of work uh, for not a lot of gain. Like this wasn't the kind of event where you make a lot of money. It seems like it, because there's a lot of people there, but it's a very expensive event and a very difficult event to produce. And they felt that it wasn't, um, it seemed that they felt that it wasn't worth the time and energy to put into it and uh, suggested that, that they do a DJ instead. <laughs> which is a very different animal. But um, what I've been wanting to do is, is to you know, let everyone know about this um, and hopefully we can um, ask that uh, they, they do this next year or the, or the next time it's safe for us to gather in a group. But ideally by next year at this time, hopefully that will be the case, if not in the following year. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna just try and put together a, um, a petition and uh, just say that the community and everyone out there really uh, wants this event to continue. It means a lot. It's more than just a social event on the ship, but it's a very important part of the community, part of the swing dance scene in New York City. And it's become an international event. People are flying in from, from this and one of the only big band festivals in the country. So uh, we will let you know when that happens. Um, and again, we'll put a, a very polite petition together just to say we would really love to have this next year if you will uh, have us again. Um, so we're going to move along uh, to some more music. Uh, we are going to be um, now featuring um, one of our, our performers from uh, two years ago when the Intrepid had to be inside. It was the only year that we had to go uh, indoors. And uh, it was uh, there was lightning happening that day, and the Intrepid had very strict rules about having people on the flight deck of a big, big metal ship when there's lightning that's visible. So um, they uh, made the call that we had to set up indoors, and uh, and in that year we had um, the next gentleman's big band was performing. Uh, we had. Uh, an amazing lineup. We had George G. Swing Orchestra, the Artie Shaw Orchestra, and then I.L. Villner and his big band. So we're going to go live now to I.L. In, in Paris. It is a lot after midnight there. Hey, I.L. Hey, what's up? You stayed up for us. What'd you say? You stayed up for us. I did stay up for you guys. Um, and not just tonight, because uh, for what you, uh, what I'm about to share with you, I actually... Uh, been uh, been pulling out all nighters for the past six days. <laughs> wow! Yeah. Tell us a little bit about this. What what have you uh, put together? Well, um, about two weeks ago, I uh, a song, an idea for a song, uh, popped into my mind in the shower, <laughs> and um, and uh, you know, I it kind of reflect the whole lockdown and quarantine teen atmosphere and uh, I really wanted to write it and I had never written actually I, I wrote you know songs and compositions before and arrangements of course but I've never written like a song with words with lyrics um, and I had kind of a general idea to it and I called uh, my good friend Tal Ronan who uh, most of you probably know is a great bass player but he's also a wonderful lyricist and songwriter mm -hmm. and we worked on it together um, and uh, yeah we we cooked something together and then I wrote the, the Big Ben arrangement and then I spent uh, the past six nights uh, working until 6 a.m. trying to learn uh, how to edit both sound and video. Um, so yeah. All right, all right. So uh, shall we play it? Give it a... Sure. Um, yeah, up? why don't you play it? Yeah, okay. We'll let's talk play. more after. All right, cool. All right, here we go. We're gonna debut IL's New video and tune, Will You Be My Quarantine? One, two, one, two, three. I 
was woken on a Monday morning Or was it Tuesday afternoon? Well, fine And the first thing on my mind was How I would ask you Will you be my quarantine? Oh, the hours spent on lazy scrolling Watching people baking bread online What would all this bread would be Without you beside me Since you ain't my quarantine Here alone I sit forlorn Like a flower waiting for the sun But if you were here It would be so clear Staying home could be so fun We would spend a lonely days together Posting pictures of our food and wine If you just remove your mask Long enough to ask me Will you be my darling For kissing and confining Will you be my quarantine Awesome, man. Thank you. <laughs> great tune. Thanks so much. Wow. So are you going to be posting this? Uh, where, where can people find it? Yes. Um, I got to be honest. The, the, the tune was written or started, I started working on it about two weeks ago, and it really reflected how I felt and kind of, you know, the state of mind. And with everything that's going on right now in the U.S., it, it felt weird to post it so i'm kind of gonna be waiting with that a little bit uh but i think it's important to say um that uh i don't know for me it's hard not to be in the u.s right now and show my support physically um and you know our community celebrates every day uh the love to this music and to this dance which are you know black american culture and the black community is suffering and it's important to show our solidarity uh with them and uh yeah so specifically regarding the video i'll probably wait a little bit when it feels of course, yeah. more appropriate but um yeah. but yes it's uh i'm super happy about how it uh came together and 
more than the process of, of uh, <laughs> giving birth to a song uh, that has lyrics um, with another person. <laughs> I'm going like different ways now. But like um, uh, working with, with somebody, I usually work by myself on, on music and stuff like that and collaborating with Tal was really a pleasure. And more than that, it really helped me bring the band back together. And I texted them really last minute because I, I was still writing the, the song while writing the arrangement, you know, all within a few days. And I kind of text them asking, you know, would they be down to like, you know, doing something together and recording it. And they were all super into it and super responsible and sent it back within a day. Uh, and then I just had to figure out how to put it all together. But, you know, it helped me. It made me, gave me an opportunity to connect with, you know, dear friends and, and music collaborators and amazing artists and just to, uh, to see them on the screen and to get another uh, track from somebody and put it together and then like, you know, hear how the song actually sounds. And then Brie, I mean, when Brianna sings it, it sounds like a song, you know? <laughs> um, so, so yeah, it's, it's been really uh, uh, a special uh, yeah. opportunity to do that so thank you for helping me uh giving me a deadline <laughs> and um yeah and uh, a lot thanks to this uh i was able to you know just decide i'm doing it it sounds great man i'm I'm really excited you put that together i'm actually gonna um uh show a video that i all didn't really know about um <laughs> before we see his other one uh so last year on the intrepid um you know, we had the video crew and I was able to get some of the raw footage. So this is, uh, I want to show um, like about a minute worth of video from last year. So the, the, the way that the Battle of the Big Band works is that we have each of the three big bands does a full 70 minute set. And then at the end, all three big bands get onto one stage. And um, it's, it's a little hard to uh, describe what that's like. Um, but imagine like 50 musicians on stage, there's three big bands, each has their own setup. And then um, it's just this massive wall of sound. Uh, and IL did the arrangements last year. Like every year we, we hired- Two years ago, right? Sorry, two years ago. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we hired uh, IL to, to do, uh, I believe it was three tunes. Um, yep. And uh, it's quite a challenge because you know a big band is hard enough as it is, but now to had triple that to have uh, uh, three big bands playing simultaneously. And this is just a moment. There is no, you know, this is just the, the audio coming raw off the camera. There's no professional mixing, but you just get a sense of the, the power of the sound and also just the brilliance of the arranging that, that I all did here. So I'm just going to uh, sneak this in here and, uh, and we're going to hear like about 45 seconds of this. <laughs> Yeah, there we go. What an amazing, amazing arrangement, Ayel. And Thank uh, you. yeah, what was it like writing for so many? Oh man, that was quite an experience as well. Um, we ended up recording that uh, arrangement on on my last, my Big Ben's last album, Swing Out. Um, and you know, leading towards the uh, the that year of the Intrepid. Um, I started uh, workshopping that arrangement for one big band, and then when uh, when you gave me the opportunity to um, to do a three big band thing, that was logistically it was interesting because you can't physically see on a you know on on your screen uh, three big bands. It's just too much. So I had to. Um, I wish I had it here, but I I like literally draw uh, kind of like a. A roadmap of what's happening that was the score that i was looking at when i was conducting the three bands 
and it was amazing. I mean, when we get to that big shout chorus, um, I, until today, I really remember that feeling of just like, you know, feeling that what like, con you know, huge wave tsunami of sound of just like, you know, yeah, really pulling me back, you know, it, it was, um, it was super fun and super powerful. And also, you know, to work with what was it 50 something people, amazing musicians in, in all three bands uh, was a really wonderful opportunity. Yeah, it was the uh, pleasure. Just to read it, it was the George G Swing Orchestra. George's and, and the R.D. Shaw, right? And um, to be able to, I, I did all kinds of combinations, if you remember, with the different vocalists in each band. And then that last one featured three clarinetists, myself and Matt Causa. And I believe it was Anthony Nelson Jr. On, uh, from George's band. Um, on clarinets in front of, up front of of each of the big band. Um, so yeah, it was it was a pleasure. I really hope to get to do it again soon. Yeah, well, we hope so. We hope so. <laughs> one more video that you put together for us. Tell us about this next track. Sure. So this one is from our next album to be, um, and um, it's something that we've been performing in New York. Uh, so all you New Yorkers um, uh, might recognize it. I mean, everybody would recognize it, but might recognize the arrangement. And uh, it's a tribute to, uh, to the great Frankie Manning. And that was, of course, uh, Frankie's uh, birthday weekend, uh, week. <laughs> and, um, you know, one of the things that was important for me all along when entering this world of Lindy Hop and Swing uh, was to bring dancers and musicians together. Uh, and that's kind of like uh, a lot of, a lot of the little parts in the arrangement uh, of our version of the Shim Sham, of Tain What You Do, um, is, uh, has a lot of the choreography that I learned um, and I put it in the arrangement. Uh, and then there's all kinds of other things, uh, little surprises that uh, you will see, but uh, I would encourage uh, everybody at home to stand up in Shim Sham with us and uh and have some fun all right here we go the debut of the new video by Ail villainer taint what you do and if you want to shim sham along go for it <laughs> She said, things may come and things may go. Here's one thing you ought to know. It's the way that you do it. It's the way that you do it. It's the way that you do it. That's what gets it. Mama, mama. It's the time that you do it. It's the time that you do it. It's the time that you do it. That's what gets it. It's the place that you do it. It's the place that you do it. That's what gets
right now, Lindy Hopper's check it out. We're gonna try something. Dances and musicians. Freeze. Swing. Freeze. Swing. Awesome. All right. <laughs> and I just want to mention that um, we're going to uh, uh, do the uh, Shim Sham and play the video again at the end of the show. We're going to do like an after party. And uh, what that means is like, obviously right now we're only seeing the performers and like a regular Zoom meeting. Uh, we're going to add everybody in during the after party. And uh, and then we're going to play the Shim Sham. So all you that want to Shim Sham to this track, to this video, we'll be able to do it back then. So stick around. Um, we, that's going to be maybe in about 20, 25 minutes or maybe 30 minutes, actually. <laughs> fine schedule. Uh, are you going to be up for this? Well, we'll see. I just might. <laughs> <laughs> I'll try my new dancing shoes. Well, you're you know jet lagged from all the work, right? So uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's uh, middle of the day for me. Now. I mean, it's two a.m. But yes, if I usually ended up the the work at about six, <laughs> then yeah, I'm I'm gonna I probably be hanging. Okay. Well, well. Hopefully, we'll see you later. Um, tell us a little bit more. Like, where can we find your stuff online? Just post it in the chat. Uh, what else you got coming up? Sure. Um, mainly the Al Vilna Big Ben Facebook page and at Al Vilna Big Ben on Instagram. Uh, we have our own website, ayalvilner.com, and uh, I've just added uh, like a donation button over there. So if you want to support the band and support these kind of projects, it's something new that I'm trying. Uh, please go ahead over there and, uh, and show some love. We would highly appreciate that. Um, and I want to give a, a shout out to uh, two people, to Ron Wilkins that you mentioned before. And I actually got a chance to uh, to talk to him, uh, to do like a video chat with him this week. Wow. And it's been so, so, so wonderful to see him and to see him back. And he's such a fighter and he's uh, he's been, like you said, um, fighting very hard with COVID and he, he got it very, very badly. And, and he's um, he's doing much better and he's on his way out. So if you can support him, please do. And also, um, I only see the panelists here, but I saw Gabby's reaction when she saw Brendan Bain, uh, and it was such a such a wonderful uh, opportunity to bring him back. Uh, Brendan was um, was also uh, uh, struggling and fighting uh, cancer for uh, for many months, and he's recovered and he's doing so much better. And to just uh, hear his voice and see his video uh, for me, it was just like super emotional and, and very joyful yeah oh beautiful i'm really glad you're able to get everyone together and also great job editing man that looks super <laughs> that's the first draft <laughs> well thank good. you you got to do more of them man i mean like uh you know i just might one of the one of the things in this quarantine is we're all learning new things that we never expected you know, I mean, from the bathtub Jenny's doing their first video, uh, you know, I'm learning all this video stuff. You're doing some editing, you know, it's, it's really been, um, it's been something it's been, uh, you know, yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you again, man. And thanks so much, Patrick. Thanks for having me. Great to see all the panelists and I look forward to the after party. I'll see more people. All right. We'll see you there. Hopefully if you, uh, stay awake, so stay awake. All right. <laughs> all right. So again, that's I.L. Villainer coming to us live from Paris. And uh, we got to debut two of his new videos, which is very, very exciting. Um, 
and one of our one of our favorite bands and kind of one of the newer bands on the scene and and we're very happy to be part of of his uh journey and um we're kind of getting towards the end of the show but we still have a couple more things coming up uh as mentioned earlier we every year on the intrepid we have both a fashion and a dance contest and um we kind of had to jury rig a dance contest this year it's really hard to do online but uh we gave gabby cook a call she's uh judged i think it's all of the dance competitions by now and we've kind of figured out how to do this massive behemoth thing and like the first year we thought it would be a small contest and uh i think we had something like a hundred people enter the first time it was insane but anyways we're gonna go uh, we're gonna come back to gabby and uh we're gonna talk about hey gabby hey everybody so how was it wrangling everyone for this competition uh on the intrepid that must oh uh yeah in, in analog years um you know it's cool um uh, Intrepid strikes a really unique balance between being, mm, let me take a step back. The Lenny Hop scene is used to swing contests. I attend and judge and teach at a lot of events with lots of swing contests. They're awesome. Thank you. And, and Intrepid taps into that, like it taps into that community, but also because the reach is just wider New York and, and not just New York areas around New York, people come from from Philly, from Hartford, from all over. Um, it's just got a real grassrootsy, just local yokel, do you like jazz, I like jazz. So um, the combination of like the two components, like just people that are in New York that like jazz, and then also the Lindy, you know, swing competition community rigmarole, and then bringing them together makes the intrepid competition super fun. Um, it's kind of the best of all worlds. So yeah, that's what it's like in 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 normal years when we're all there in person. Right, exactly. And I have to say, like, I didn't quite like. I had the idea of doing the competition, but didn't think it was going to be such a thing. But Gabby yeah. was the one that was like, "Uh, uh-uh, this is a thing," and and it became big. People took it very very seriously. Um, and we were also very lucky to partner with uh, Lincoln Center. So oftentimes the winners of the competition would get to perform at Midsummer Night Swing. Uh, and uh, la- we, the last two years, I think it was the solo jazz competition winner got to perform. Uh, yeah. Like a solo piece, which I, like I think, so the winner of the solo jazz competition last year was Mimi Liu. Uh, Lake Olu. Oh, and um, yeah, and then the award for that is like just doing a, a three minute solo expression of jazz in front of the like hundreds and hundreds of people that come to Damrosh Park for Midsummer Night Swing, which is a gigantic deal. And like, shout out to Mimi, shout out to Brandon, shout out to all the people that have accepted that award and then like lived up to the prize, which is like sort of another more high stakes performance. Um, it's it's so badass, like, it's great. Yeah. I wish we could do that again this year, but uh, we've heard that Lincoln Center has not doing Midsummer Night Swing this this summer, which is which is sad because it's sort of one of our favorite events. It seems to be like the, the gateway swing event that everyone goes to first and then they start to take classes after that. And then it, it's so many people met each other for the first time on uh, the dance floor at Midsummer Night Swing and, um, uh, so we're very happy to partner with them on that. But this year we had to do it a little different for obvious reasons. And uh, uh, so tell us a little bit about um, uh, how do we want to do this? We've got yeah. a show. Uh... <laughs> let, me put, let me pull up my notes. Uh, so we had bu- bu- bu, um, one, two, three, four, five. And do I have that right? Yeah, five entries. And um, here's the thing, like, it's a kind of the conversation you are just having with AL. Everybody out there who's creative is now creating online content and it's a learning curve, but it's drawing out a creative spirit um, and an area of growth in everyone. And, uh, and that's true of the professionals and that's true of people that are just submitting material. So every one of these um, uh, competitors um, created something and they didn't just dance but they also created a video they went to a place they danced in a particular way uh so um i guess what i'll do um these are for the competitors watching uh we have an overall award and we have unique awards uh to hand out to everyone because um 
everybody just sh shined, shown in a unique and special way. Uh, so I have, um, I don't have a drum kit, but I have this egg. So that, that can be our... Egg roll, please. Egg roll, please, yeah. So for most colorful setting and most innovative exiting steps, we have Christian and Hannah, and you can find their entry on Instagram. Uh, we'll post links to all the individual uh, entries uh, in the chat. For best lines and sassiest performance, we have Tawny. We yeah, I know people are people are screaming and yelling in their apartments. Don't take my silent apartment to be anything less than uproarious applause. Yes, fire emoji. I agree, Orion. All right, we have for most happening swivels and best flow. We have Tim and Zoe. Yeah, you can take that to the bank. Most happening swivels. That's hard, hard one. Um, we have four highest aerials and best dancing in a mask. We have Tony and Tori. And that is like a real dancing with a mask. We all know like how much effort it takes to do aerials. So like, let's double give it up. Double give it up for them. Yeah, exactly. And then our last contestant, we have Belle and Perk and Reggie. I know, I just announced them already, but they knew because they were last. Who win for a Best Neighborhood Hang and the Community Spirit Award because Belle did some dancing and she invited her neighbors to join in the video with her. And it was really sweet and it was wonderful. Very awesome. Um, so those are the individual awards. We'll, uh, we'll post links to, uh, to all of those and, and exact titles, but uh, a contest is a contest. So if we give one overall award, we're gonna give it up to, it's less exciting when it's just me. Hey, girl, hey. Christian and Hannah for having great musicality, great choreography, great setting, a great exit. They're in Philadelphia. They're lovely dancers. They're lovely people. And give it up because they win the uh, Intrepid Battle of the Bands 2020 Digital Virtual Online Dance Contest lesson thing. Anyways, that's a lot of words, but they win all of it. So, <laughs> so give it up at home. Do this and uh, Christian and Hannah will know that uh, that we were applauding them. Yay, all right. Yay, fire emoji. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much, Gabby. Um, and we're going to, uh, we'll post the links for those videos. Oh, wait. Oh, you know or, what? Let's play the video. I have the video right here. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Let's play the video of Christian. You'll, Christian and Hannah, you'll see why they also get, like, the most exciting setting award. Okay, all right, here we go. Grounds it, you know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Very of the moment. All right. Well, thank you again, Gabby. It's a pleasure having you back on the show, and uh, we appreciate all that you do. And uh, and you're are you teaching online? Remind us what your online. Yeah, uh, I, I have. I'm releasing online classes. They're uh, they're free and they're fun, and um, they're kind of just they're just my contribution to um, getting by and um, 
keeping jazz and jazz dancing in your life, which um, uh, which is an important thing to do, just moving around and feeling connected to uh, to the music and the style of uh, music that um, style of movement that you love. So um, you can find that at Jazz As Movement on um, basically every social platform except Twitter, because Twitter gives me a sad. So uh, I'll post links to all of that uh, in the chat if you would like to uh, to find jazz classes that I'm doing online. Awesome. All right. Thank you so much, Gabby. All right, and that's Gabby Cook uh, doing our virtual dance competition variation this year on the Intrepid. So we're getting towards the end. We only have one more musical guest coming up. Um, and we, uh, we want to remind you, if you haven't done so already, please send a donation or a tip, if you prefer to call it that way. But uh, it is very much appreciated. We share it amongst all of our performers tonight. And um, we're also giving a portion of the proceeds to the Veterans Radiothon in Philadelphia. Um, since the Intrepid Battle of the Big Bands is usually part of uh, Memorial Day weekend and Fleet Week here in New York City. And... Um, so up next, uh, we have one of our favorite performers. And uh, for a long time, he was a New Yorker, but now he has moved upstate. Uh, he is a dynamo on the piano. He is Lindy Hopper and amazing musician. His energy is contagious. Uh, his name is Gordon Webster, and we've been very privileged to have him uh, many times here in New York. Um, he was uh, he did a, a big band for us at the Battle of the Big Bands, and um, I think it was our second one. Um, and uh, and he's he's performing all over the world normally, but obviously not right now. But we're very fortunate to have him. So let's go say hello to the one and only Gordon Webster. Hey, Gordon. Hey, Patrick. How's it going? Good, man. So you're in Rochester. Look at that beautiful piano. It's my living room. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Most really are. I've always wanted to bring my piano to gigs. <laughs> well, next time we'll put it on the boat, right? Yeah, sure. <laughs> so I imagine you had a lot of gigs that got uh, canceled with all this happening. Yeah, I certainly did like everybody else. Yeah, we're definitely uh, feeling a 180 degree turn here. It's a different... Uh, it feels well, like every weekend you're normally in a different country in a different, uh, you know, dance festival. Yeah, quite, quite often I'll have a month that has four uh, different events in it, like, you know, different countries and stuff. Yeah. Yeah, let's just say it's been an incredible blessing to spend... Lots of time with my family. With my, I have two children. Um, Brittany is aged 13 months, and Marcus is almost six years. Wow. So, yeah, it's been pretty full on. <laughs> Anybody starting to play music yet? What's that? Any of them starting to play music yet? Sure. Yeah. Yeah. It's great. Great. So, uh, what are you, you going to play for us? What do you have uh, in store? I do what I normally do. And I just wrote down a bunch of ideas, and uh, I'm just going to decide a second before the song which one to play next. And, uh, <laughs> I don't know. I thought I would uh, go ahead and um, uh, is, is the sound coming out there? Is it working? Tickle those keys a little bit. Yeah. Uh, it could be a little louder if you if you put a little. That. Uh... Hmm. How's that? It's not as loud as your vocal mic. Do you have the phantom power on? I do. <laughs> we set this up earlier today, everybody. This is my first uh, live stream. It's actually the debut. I like to paint it as a, the debut of my Mason, Mason and Hamlin new old piano. <laughs> there we go. It's 1915. It's a Model A Mason and Hamlin, the heaviest piano known to mankind, I believe. I'm sure you found that out when you moved it in. Uh, we definitely did, yes. So that's still not very loud, is it? It, it, it's it's not um do you have any more gain on there you can put up definitely this is what sound checks are for <laughs> <laughs> how's that is that better it didn't actually change that much do you have the um interface selected for the microphone just double check that it's not coming out at all your micro your vocal is but it's not really coming out on the uh, other mics oh i'm so sorry okay Technical difficulties. It always happens. It's live. Just double check you've got phantom power on. That might be. Uh, I think it's oh, it might not be done. 
There we go. I just heard a click on. That's it. Okay. Try try that again. I heard a click on, man. So I think I think you're good. Yeah. It's coming out now, right? I would actually turn the volume down a little bit now since you probably cranked it. So this is a uh, showbiz live and in person. I just had to get fired up. <laughs> you know, it wouldn't be a quarantine speakeasy without a workout. Uh. <laughs> that makes technical difficulties, you know, let's make it real. So we're good now, right? Yeah. Let's see what you got. I'm going to go right into this. Um, everybody knows this song, and this is one, one of my earlier albums, but this is uh, the, the song with many names. It started out as a riff in the Duke Ellington band, and, um, and then it was later adapted by many different Oh, yeah, it's Jimmy Forrest. Jimmy Forrest uh, did some ad adaptations, and uh, it's been uh, recorded by Oscar Peterson and many other great artists, and um, it's called Night Train, otherwise known as Happy Go Lucky Local, and I'm going to play a version of it. All right. That worked. The sound check was good, man. Yeah, glad we can hear this. <laughs> can hear this. I was speaking in the microphone as a, ironically, you can't hear my talking. So I think I'm going to slow things down. No, I was going to speed things up from there. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm so gla uh, grateful that my, uh, my wife, my kids, and my wife's mother are able to be here live. So, because it, it just feels so odd to not have an audience. And uh, I have this uh the the uh what do you call it the great fortune of being able to have a live audience I in addition to the audience that i can't see and feel yeah oh here's it there there's my daughter and my wife it's Brittany and katie <laughs> um yeah so i thought i'd play something a little more easy going right now and uh this is one of my favorite songs uh that we used to play at the mona's uh yeah one of the things that i miss about the great city of new york 
is the Mona's jam session that happens every Tuesday night. And I was in the, uh, oh, there's my, my son, Marcus. They wanted to say hi. Marcus. Um, the uh, Mona's jam session, which is a uh, sort of a early jazz, New Orleans jazz, uh, <clears throat> et cetera, uh, jazz yeah, jam session. I can't hear you too well, Patrick. Are you talking? Oh, was that 10 years ago that that started? 11 years ago? 2007, right around July 2007. So it'll be the 13 year, it would be the 13 year anniversary. No, it is. I mean, I don't think it's going to stop. It's just on hiatus like everything right now. So yeah, it's been 13 years since its, since its inception. Um, but I was in the um, uh, host band with, along with Dennis Lickman, and uh, Nick Russo and Jared Engel uh, for years. And for a little while, it was Cassidy Holden on the bass instead of Jared. But uh, in any case, so this is one of the songs that I learned from that scene. It's a very old song. It's called Rock and Chair. I'd like to play that for you guys now. Microphone. 
I don't know if you caught that guest appearance by my. Uh, yeah, we didn't know you had a whole band. Yeah, you know, the whole family will get it on this thing eventually. It was like a three hand piano, right? Yeah, I think she was uh, using her uh, head or something. I didn't really notice. <laughs> Anyway, uh, fortunately, she didn't use her feet, which is another uh, another element that she often uses. <laughs> um, yeah. All right. Well, maybe I'll move right along and play something else. I, I thought I might play uh, a little Fats Waller uh, for you. Yes. Um, or my interpretation of a, uh, of a tune that Fats Waller recorded in 1935 uh, when my piano was 20 years old. Um, and uh, it's a song called Truckin'. So here we go. Trucking was the name of the dance, apparently. So there you go. Where should we go from here? Mm. Well, I have to confess, I didn't watch the whole program, so I'm not sure if this song has been played. But uh, it's a song that I do like to play on occasion. It requires a very important drum fill, which I might do, uh, or I might, you know, just leave to the audience. Just kidding. Uh, <laughs> Anyway, uh, I thought I would play Shiny Stockings. Has anyone done Shiny Stockings? No. No. Oh, man. This is, a, is this a Lindy Hop event? I mean, it's kind uh, of... Uh, Ayel, Gabby, and Rachel are all shaking their head like, no. Not. Yeah, why not? Well, it's because you left it to me. So there you go. Got the memo. All right. So, uh, yeah. Uh, no Lindy Hop event would be complete without Frankie Manning's favorite song. And, uh, well... Uh, it needs no introduction, but I will give it an introduction. Uh, written by Frank Foster and um, recorded very famously uh, by the Count Basie Orchestra many times, including a very famous version on the a April in Paris album. And uh, I kind of have an adaptation of this, an arrangement of this that is uh, adapted or, you know, it's happened over the years organically. And it's kind of a piano solo, you know, so it works out pretty well that I just happened to 
be a pianist and I, I'm the only one in the band here. So I'm going to attempt to play all the parts and uh, give you a rendition of this right now. This is Frank Foster's uh, Shiny Stockings and as it goes out to Frankie Manning in the spirit of Frankie Manning, the spirit of Lindy Hop and here it is.
second time around, I just decided I don't want to beat up my piano anymore. <laughs> Man, I don't know if you could see it, but like all the panelists, or all the performers from earlier were all up dancing. We got oh, Kennedy oh. and Il and, and Ron. I'm not able to really look up there while I'm playing. Yeah. But you know, you you mentioned something earlier that you might want to like have people come in and start dancing away. Do you want to do that? Oh yeah, let's do that. Yeah. Okay. All right. So, you know, for the last couple of weeks during the after party, what we would do is that anybody that wants to join and dance uh, on on the video of the live stream, what you do is that on the chat, let us know that you want to join the dance and I'll add you in one by one into the video live stream. So, um, uh, if you if you're not on the chat already, hit the chat button, which should be either at the bottom or on the side, and uh, we'll gradually add everyone in one by one. And uh, uh, we're gonna ask you all to make sure that your audio stays muted because what we really want to hear is Gordon's playing. Um, and um, and uh, let's uh, let's open this up. All right. So what do you want to do next, man? Oh, we're getting a lot of requests. Whew. Okay, this is good. This is good. Um, I think I want to in encourage people to to shimmy. So I'm going to play I Wish I Could Shimmy Like My Sister Kate. Okay, all right. Here we go. 1922 song, which was seven years after my piano was built. <laughs> all relative. All an interesting relative. theme for me because I, I don't ever get to bring my piano to a gig. You know what I mean? This is really fun. All right, you guys ready? Let's do it.
Um, we've got a whole bunch of people right now. I wish I could see them. I wish I could see them. Um, well, let's see. We've got. Oh, Gabby, say something. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there it is. Hey, hey. Yeah. everybody. So again, anybody that wants to join the dance party, uh, please let me know in the chat. I will add you. You will come in muted and with your video off. Turn your video on, but keep your audio off because all we want to hear is Gordon's playing. Um, and uh, I, it's going to take me a while to get to everybody. So be patient and I will uh, add you all in. All right, Gordon, what do you got next? This is fun. All right. Um... I don't know. I think uh, I think it's time that I uh, sing a number, you know. Yes. <laughs> um, I'm used to like waiting and you know hearing people's reactions to what I say. <laughs> there is no reaction, um, which is you know the same as oh, a lot of people are doing lots of oh, they're saying uh, drink, drink something. That's a very good idea. Hand claps, you know. Tender, can I have a? Okay, um, I'd like to sing I'd, uh, "Long Gone John" for Bowling Green. Yes. Because uh, it's one of the three songs I know how to sing. So I'd like to do this for y'all right now. And, you know, <laughs> some people are muted and they're... Everyone's muted and that's on purpose. Stay oh, muted. A lot. It's really funny. Yeah. I'm looking at you, Gabby. Okay. <laughs> you I want her to dance, but I'm worried that she's going to knock something over behind me. here. If you can, I'll hand her to you. Hold on. That's just what my life is like. All right, here we go. <clears throat> now I have to act like a trombone, right? world. Have you heard the one about Long John Dean? A bold bank robber from Bowling Green. He stepped out the jailhouse yesterday. Late last night he made his get away. Long gone from Kentucky. Long gone. Ain't he lucky? Long gone. What I mean? A long gone John from Bowling Green. Uh, uh, for these. Uh, uh, Long John stood on the railway tie, waiting for the freight train to come on by. The freight train came by, whistling and flying. You ought to see Long John grabbing that line. Long gone from Kentucky. Long gone. Ain't he lucky? Long gone. What I mean, a long gone down from Ballin' Green. I'm trading with myself. They took him down to Frisco to seal his fate. Down to San Quentin, they jailed him up late. But out on the ocean, he did escape because the guy forgot to lock that golden gate. Long gone from Kentucky, long gone. Ain't he lucky? Long gone. What I mean, a long gone down from Bowling Green. want a little interlude.
How you doing, everybody? If you're feeling good, sc scream real loud. <laughs> That's my wife, everybody. <laughs> Offered a reward to bring him back. They even put bloodhounds on his track. The bloodhounds went and lost his scent. Now nobody knows where Long John went. I said, Long gone. I'm from Kentucky. Long gone. Ain't he lucky? Long gone. What I mean? A long gone John from Bowling Green. Long gone. From Kentucky, long gone. Ain't he lucky? Long gone. A word I mean, a long gone down from Bowling Green. So I think we've got about 30 dancers on right now. In your own apartment. Uh, in yours, actually. <laughs> so uh, are you going to uh, get a couple more? You can get as long as you want. I hear anybody. Yeah. No, I cannot hear you either. Yeah, well, everyone's muted. Otherwise, we wouldn't be able to hear you. Language anyway. Can you guys hear me? Yes. Everyone do the uh because the second clap. back here. This is funny, I can't hear the play the talk back. It's this down here, I think. Yeah, this became unplugged or turned off. Hold on. Uh -huh. Did I lose all power? Hey, how do you hear us now? Can you can you still hear me? We hear you. Do you hear us? No? I guess not. We hear you though, you're good. Keep playing, man. It's, you can hear me. You can hear me. Yes, very well. Okay, I just lost my talk back from you, so. Okay. Eh. We don't have much to say. We just want to hear you play. Oh, okay. <laughs> Did I play another song? Yes. Okay. That's kind of funny. I don't know what happened. I think a uh, very young person just unplugged something. Okay. Do something like this.
Okay. Any signals you want to give me? Uh, well, how about another tune? Um, okay. Well, I think I'm going to uh, go on, play more songs. Is that the idea? Yes. Yes? Okay. <laughs> Okay. Thanks, everybody.
I would love it. Thank you, thank you. I would love to turn on the sound and see what's going on. <laughs> I think um, I'd be happy to play one final song, if that's all right with you guys. You guys want to do that? Patrick, yeah, I see you in the upper left corner. Okay, we're going to do one last song. Thank you all for joining me. Uh, this is a lot more eventful than my Saturday, night, Saturday nights have been for the last several weeks, I have to say. Um, so thank you, thank you very much. Thank you, Patrick and Prohibition Productions for having me. Um, let me see what to play here. There we go. I think, uh, I think I want to play something kind of bluesy. Um, I think I like to play, um, I think I like to play Monin for y'all. All right.
All right, man. Bravo. So, uh, thanks everybody. All right. Thanks again for having me. I'm going to turn things over to, uh, whoever is DJing right now. Is that you, Patrick? Yes. Can you oh, hear us? Thank you again, Patrick Sillery and all of you who are here and hopefully we can do this again sometime. All right. Thank you so much, Gordon. I don't think you can hear us, uh, but we loved hearing you and, uh, dancing to you and uh, what a rare treat in these strange times um, so we're at the end of the regular part of our show but we're gonna move on to the after party uh, so uh, everyone who is still dancing you're welcome to, to stay there um, we're gonna be uh, playing a bunch of uh, tracks uh, of live music that we recorded on the intrepid over the last few years so we've got uh, I.L. Villeneuve's band, we've got uh, Bria Skamberg and the Sisterhood of Swing, we've got Artie Shaw Orchestra, um, lots of great stuff coming up. And uh, uh, we want to thank you all for, for watching and uh, for, for your donations. If you haven't donated yet, please send a donation in. Uh, we're going to be accepting donations today, tomorrow, Monday, all the way through Tuesday. Uh, this video, if you aren't seeing it um, live uh we are still accepting donations through tuesday so it'll be up on facebook and on youtube and uh the idea is that we're sharing this amongst all of our performers tonight and uh we're also giving a, a portion to the uh, veterans radiothon in philadelphia to support the veterans since the intrepid is usually on memorial day weekend and part of the fleet week and um what a wonderful way to share this uh fifth anniversary for the battle of big bands we wish we could do it in person but we did it this way and we're glad you joined us for that um we'll be back next week uh we are doing this every saturday night as long as we are in quarantine here in new york city so uh we are definitely here next week and probably the week after uh and we hope you'll join us then uh we want to thank everyone that performed tonight we had drew nugent in philly uh the bathtub Ginnies. We had the Manhattan uh, Barbershop Quartet and Dandy Wellington leading our fashion contest, as well as Marlo Gamora for the cocktails. And then the amazing Bria Skomberg. Um, I.L. Vilner is in Paris and uh, he's still up. Oh, he's drinking some wine now. Fancy schmancy. Actually, speaking of wine, this is the last bottle of what we call intrepid wine. We uh, bought many cases of this uh for the intrepid and we had a couple of cases we bought back and we've been drinking rosé for a while now so last bottle we're finishing it tonight we hope you join us for some cocktails and dancing um we also want to thank gabby cook for leading our our dance contest and for gordon webster for playing and letting us dance to you um thank you again again fifth anniversary of the intrepid we hope to do it live next year uh, we'll be putting a petition out shortly to hopefully do that and uh, we want you to keep on dancing and keep on swinging even if it's in this virtual context we will be back soon and doing it live and we can't wait till that time so what we're going to do first for the after party is uh we're going to play il vilner's um taint what you do and we're going to do the shim sham and gabby is going to lead it um I'm realizing that we're going to hear the audio, but not see the video. Otherwise, we can't see everybody. So it's one of the, how about this? I know I was protesting. We're going to start with the video, and then we're going to go into everybody here. So if anybody wants to join the Shim Sham and the whole after party, uh, if you haven't done so already, message us on the chat. If you haven't engaged the chat, it should be at the bottom or on the side of your screen. Let us know if you want to join. We will add your video in and you can join with everybody. We're going to keep on dancing for a little bit. And all the music after IL's uh, Shim Sham is going to be live tracks recorded on the Intrepid. So we want to thank you again. And uh, uh, here we go with IL Vilner and Taint What You Do.
when I was a kid about half past three. My mom said, son, come here to me. She said, things may come, but things may go. Five, six, oh, five, six, seven. It's the way that you do it. It's the way that you do it. It's the way that you do it. That's what gets Mama, mama. It's the time that you do it. It's the time that you do it. It's the time that you do it. That's what gets It's the place that you do it. It's the place that you do it. What time is it? Now, Lindy Hopper is checking it out. We're going to try something. Dances and musicians. Freeze. Swing. Freeze. Swing. That was I.L. Vilner and Taint What You Do. We debuted that video tonight. I'm sure it's going to be online soon. But we are not done, and we want to thank you, Gordon. I, I'm sure you got a scotch there, right? Cheers, man. Thank you so much. And uh, we're going to keep it going. We've got some after-party action happening. We're going to be DJing all live tracks we recorded on The Intrepid over the last couple of years. So uh, we are going to start with, uh, how about the Sisterhood of Swing with Bria Skomberg. Then we got some I.L. Villener, some Jonathan Stout, some Artie Shaw Orchestra. All right. Thanks, everyone. If you haven't donated, please do so. We're keeping those open till Tuesday. And uh, we hope to see you next week. Keep on swinging. Stay healthy. And uh, have a good evening. Couldn't have asked for a better night to do it. When you're feeling low, when you don't know what to do. When you're feeling low, when you don't know what to do. Just get in the groove. Don't let nothing bother you.
some fun. You only live once, and when you're dead, you're done. Let the good times roll. Let the good times roll. I don't care if you're young. Let the good times roll. Don't sit there mumbling, talking trash.
to walk 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 to walk. It makes no difference if it's sweet or hot. Oh, you just give that rhythm everything you got. Don't mean a thing if it ain't got that swing. Do walk to 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 walk. Do boop 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 Do wop, do wop, do wop, do wop, do wop, do wop, do wop. It don't don't mean a thing if it ain't got that swing. Do wop, 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 do wop. It makes no difference if it's heat or high. Oh, you better give that rhythm everything you've got. Don't mean a thing if it ain't got that swing. Do 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 wop. Do 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 wop. Do wop, do wop, do wop. next tune that we call our signature tune, it's entitled Flying Home.
All right. Whoa. All right, folks. So uh, we are going to do one more tune, and um, hmm. okay. Now we're back. So we're going to do one more tune. Um, we have uh, been playing all live music recorded on the Intrepid, and uh, the last tune we had "Lindy Hopper's Delight" by the Jonathan Stout Orchestra. And uh, before that, we had the Harlem Renaissance Orchestra doing Flying Home. And then uh, we had Ayal Vilner with Brianna Thomas doing Don't Mean a Thing. So everything we've been hearing on uh, our DJ set has been live tracks recorded over the last couple of years on the Intrepid Battle of the Big Bands. So we're going to do one last tune, and this is kind of a long one. It's about eight minutes long, but it is the finale that we would do at the very end. And uh, it's all three big bands on one stage. This is from the 2018. So uh, that was I.L. Villeneuve's arrangement with his big band, George G. and the Artie Shaw Orchestra. I'm not even sure what song this is, but uh, it's going to be a good one and a nice long one. So we're going to uh, wrap things up with this last tune from the finale of the 2018 Intrepid Battle of the Big Bands. Thank you, everyone, and uh, we'll see you next time. Good night.
folks, that's it. Uh, we want to thank you for joining us tonight for the uh, sixth anniver fifth anniversary of the Intrepid Battle of the Big Bands and our sixth quarantine speakeasy. We'll be back next week on June 6th, so uh, stay safe, keep on swinging, and uh, we thank you again for joining us. And don't forget, please send donations. If you haven't done so already, we'll be taking them all the way through Tuesday. We hope to be posting this on Facebook and on YouTube. Uh, as mentioned, these recordings are not available anywhere. They are from our private collection that we recorded live on the Intrepid. Maybe someday we'll uh, release them, uh, and maybe next year we'll be doing this live again. So thanks again, and uh, have a good night. Take care.